Okay, I'd, I'd love to introduce Hope Lindblad. Um, I, we had so many good artist favorites in this show, and I don't know if it was the subject matter. I'm going to resist the urge to read yours. I think I, I feel like I gave too much of Sarah's away. Um, but I will say um, that Hope has this beautiful meditation on her name um, and what it means, um, and that it has inspired a lifelong multidisciplinary approach, research approach of light, home, community, beauty, relationships. Um, and the other piece of that you said, um, that she believes that hospitality is the highest form of art, which was really interesting to me. Um, and this approach has allowed her to work on the themes of memory, relational aesthetics, and light through photography, paint, poetry, performance, and installation. And a poem is very much an integral part of her piece. Um, and she has it with her, yeah. so thanks, so. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, maybe you should stand on the other side of your piece there. So you can see. Because um, it's the sea. It's a, it's a pun. <laughs> That's my dad would be proud. He's the one who taught me, really, the art of poetry is playing with words. Um, my name is Hope and welcome. As I said, hospitality to me is the highest form of art. So I just want you to feel at home if you need to take off your shoes or sit on the floor or dance while I'm sharing. Um, Please feel at home. And I'm going to start and end with a poem. So however you like to receive poetry, if that's with your eyes closed or hands open, um, I believe in the power of prayer, and that's a radical thing to say sometimes, but I believe poetry can be a prayer. It leaves space for the mystery. Um, and this piece is called The Horizon of Hope. And this was a poem written on my trusty 1970 Olivetti typewriter that has traveled the world with me. And I wrote it on a piece of handmade paper because um, I work at a, stu a paper studio right down the street called Shotwell Paper Mill. So, the horizon of hope. On this shore of unknown, sit with silence and allow it to inspire a new way of seeing through fog and storm. This sea has told our story of torrent and trial, and there comes the horizon. A line of something new. Sit here with me and listen. Begin to see the possibilities beyond connecting continents and cultivating community. On this horizon of hope, Humanity be restored, looking beyond and within and finding the horizon within our swimming souls, light in our eyes as it begins to rise. So that is poem number one. And then I'm gonna pass out poem number two for the end, if you're a visual person. This is for you as a gift. Um, so my name has inspired a lifelong journey of seeking out what does hope mean? Um, and this is a watercolor painting, which is my first time ever showing to the public world a watercolor painting. I am most comfortable with installation, poetry, and photography. Um, but watercolor has come into my life through many Zoom calls the past three years. I would hide my watercolor palette and be paying attention to the many meetings I was on. And that developed a practice a daily practice of letting color just do what it wants with water on the page. And this particular piece, um, I used salt water from Ocean Beach <laughs> and um, was inspired to use my grandmother's old painting palette. She studied art and then put her painting palette down for about 40 years and I found it in her home. So this is also a tribute to my grandmother and the heritage that I get to adapt as an artist in the age that we live in mixed with salt water, and there is a poem also written on it, which are the words of my lover and um, legally my husband named Peter, and it says, I breathe within the sea and stopped to simply be. This is the poetry of humanity, to exist, to stare upon this horizon of hope, stretching myself into eternity's light and lingering. 
So for me, my journey of um, traveling, I lived over in Paris, France for four years, and I remember flying across the ocean and saying, that's home. This is home, the in-between. I don't belong to America fully right now because I have my passport and my visa, and I don't ever belong to France because my accent, I'll never have a full French accent. So for me, the, the idea of belonging in the horizon when I was living in Paris, I really missed seeing the ocean. I grew up in California, spent time in Santa Barbara for my undergrad, and would see the horizon every day. And when I moved to Paris, I would run to the Seine and try to find a body of water to feel like home. And it never quite satisfied. And then I came back here, and I looked for Paris everywhere, and it never quite satisfied, because I was in California. So a lot of my journey of home has been in the anchor, which I have this little tattoo. Um, it's an anchor because when my parents named me, they gave me a Bible verse um, as a blessing over my life. And it says um, that we would have this hope as an anchor of the soul, strong and secure. And so their prayer for my life has always been that I would be anchored in love and in my faith and um, that really has become my story, is an anchor is in that dark, deep place. It's not always beautiful and easy in those dark, deep places, but it holds the thing on the surface from sinking. Um, and then finally, I wanted to note with the storms we have, my friend lives down the street, she said, the mission is known for flooding. It historically was a creek and of the alone people, and um, it really is uh, the, the corner where she lives is La Langua. Is this how you pronounce? Lengua. lengua la Lengua. En français, la langue. <laughs> so it means the tongue. And it also can be translated to the river, which I just, Peter, I was listening to you and also your work. I was just like, it all connects. <laughs> and our words being a form of a river, it has to flow and it, it makes new pathways. Um, it makes a way for things to be transported from culture to culture. And really, I believe the sea is what um, connects us all and breaks down borders. So I said I would end with a poem, didn't I? Um, would anyone like to read a poem with me? We could go line by line. Is anyone feeling like they need to speak their words? I think I, I didn't pick myself up. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I don't want to put anyone on the spot. I'm happy to. Okay, Julia. Okay. Do you want to stand up here with me? Sure. Okay. okay. And Oops. this is Julia. <laughs> and I wanted to share. Julia and I are part of an artist in residency wow. down at Project Our Toad this month called Renewal, and we started this week. So we'll share more information about that. You want to start? Try uh, go line by line. Yeah. Right? Okay. I will start. Renewal. Renewal. Renovate my heart and find beauty in the ruins. Redeem the forgotten promises. Revise the pages of this story. Bring forth the dawn. And awaken us into beauty. Reclaim the wastelands. Make them a shelter. Polish that which has become dull. And shine the shoes of peace. To continue walking this dusty pilgrim path. Renew in me a thirst for eternity. Restore the broken pieces. Bind me into rebirth daily. Renew. Redeem. Refresh us with renewness. And surprise us with joy. As we see old things revealed into former glory. Renewal. <laughs> Thank you for listening and being in my home for a moment. <laughs> Any questions? Yes. What What's your name? France? Sorry? What took you to France? Oh. Mm. <laughs> wow. <laughs> a lot of things. I, um, my mom lived in France when she was 17, and my grandparents took me when I was 12. And I didn't speak anything but merci beaucoup, and it was embarrassing, but I immediately fell in love with everything French. As a young person, I'm the youngest of four children, so I really identify, Peter, with what you're saying about siblings 
I found I could speak the language easier than my siblings, and I immediately started learning and adopted France as my thing. So um, I was really attracted to the way that artists can live there, and when you share, je suis artiste, it means I'm an artist, and no one says, well, what do you do? <laughs> um, they just accept and say, oh, wow, and really, society has known artists for a long time. Um, there's a picture I took. Thank you for asking. Yes? Um, connecting on to that, do you feel like Paris developed in you a sensibility that wouldn't have been born had you not lived there? Mm. Yeah. Um, my friend Lydia is here who lived in Paris too, so I'm like, oh. there is this like tension that exists for me thinking about Paris because it's this romance and a reality. Um, for me, it was, I had to grow up a lot very quickly, um, being a young dreamer and dealing with winter and seasonal depression. And um, I think it developed in me the poet and someone that can say I'm a poet because it was a little different than artists. I'm a poet, I'm someone who wants to speak her mind um, and I needed an avenue to do that, so. Language was a big thing. Yeah. Any other questions? So I'm just gonna say one little thing. Yeah. Hope uh, came into the so I have a gallery on Clement Street, and I've been very adamant about that space and how it feeds the space and these communities and these neighborhoods like being touching and like we're such a small city. Right? So hope. for making a home and a shelter for artists. It truly, like, this was a gift to have my work somewhere that can be seen. So you are our home, like, you are our home to so many people. So thank you. Well, we wouldn't be their home if there weren't so many needs. Like, yeah. Everyone needs a place. Yeah. So thank you. Thank you.